Prince Burton does much of Channing's act, but he also leaves the birds in their cages. at the stake in 1450, Lance Burton's serious big demonstration of magical immolation would have gotten him burned at the stake any time between 300 and 1800 AD. In the latter Middle Ages, the Inquisition turned from heretics to witchcraft with a vengeance. Magicians tried to protect themselves from the Inquisitors as best they could by looking and acting non-threatening. Lance Burton certainly wouldn't have tried cremating and restoring any of his followers back then. In 1584, support for the conjurers arrived from an unexpected source, a retired... The levitation can also be spectacular, as performed by Lance Burton. Jim Steinmeier, illusion builder, coming as close as he can to telling how it's done. The whole notion of a, of a levitation is there's nothing on stage, but uh, there's a lot behind the scenes that are responsible for creating that illusion, and, and quite a bit of science as well. Uh, not necessarily astounding principles of science, but very, very solid applications dating all the way back to the Greeks of, you know, what it takes to hold something up and what it takes in terms of weights and measures and apparatus. to journey farther out, seeking the ever more fantastic. Coins from the air are fine, but we want to fly. With the help of new technology, and in a world less eager to attach the conjuring artist to the burning stake, magic in the mid-1800s began to fly and do a great deal more besides, and it returned to secular versions of the holy temples of its infancy. As the theater evolved, there came a housing again to create kind of a sacred place for the arts. Oh, did I say sacred? And here, the magician moves from the street back into the temple of the arts. Which is the theater, with the magician playing the challenging central role of God, creating, destroying, transforming, the fire and the stake forgotten at last. Do you believe in magic? Amazed. The magician is Lance Burton. The speaker is Jeff McBride. If you look at the old theaters, or if you look at theaters today, they're built like temples. They were palaces. Magicians moved back into the theater where they could create magical rituals and ceremonies again under the guise of popular entertainment. And they needed that entertainment, guys. If Lance Burton had presented this illusion 200 years ago, his audience might well have assumed it was real and that Burton was a witch possessed by the devil. He would have become the principal log on a large fire in the company of his underclad female familiars. But the Industrial Revolution also heralded the age of science, science we thought would explain all our mysteries. 
including the mysterious witchcraft of the professional magician. Because it's a trick replaced it's a witch, magicians were allowed back into the secular temples of entertainment to present the grand themes of life, death, and resurrection. Lance Burton is about to reappear in the middle of the audience, in the middle of a contemporary temple of ritual, ceremony, and popular entertainment called the Hacienda. What we're going to see is that the more people are presented with answers, the more people are told to stop caring about things. And the other Las Vegas illusionist to watch is Lance Burton, an erstwhile Kentucky farm boy who's been practicing magic since he was five years old. Among his biggest fans are other magicians, like Jamie Ian Swiss. Lance has taken this form of the classical manipulative, what magicians refer to as manipulative magic, uh, the guys who produce uh, all these objects. And very often, most of the time, you see performers doing this type of magic, instead of wondering how they do it, you kind of wonder why. The answer is, if you can do it this well, then it's worth doing. Lance Burton's big show starts with small feats of wonder, a tribute to the legendary magicians who are his heroes. So he spews cards and cigarettes like Cardini and produces doves like Birdmasters Channing Pollock and Johnny Thompson, who sees Burton not as another magician, but as the next magician. There was a lineage in magic. And uh, just recently, Lee Grable passed the mantle on to Lance Burton. With the birds back in their cages, Lance Burton starts the big illusions Vegas visitors expect. But his presentations are still classical. In this case, the backstage illusion, first popularized in the 1930s by Dante, where the magician plays the whole effect back to front so the audience can see how it's really done, or so they think. Lance Burton has the showroom and the means to make small tricks look big and big tricks look bigger. Smiling, dancing, fishnetted women. The presence and absence of women in magic isn't solely a gender issue. It reveals a lot about the nature of performance magic itself and the nature of the audience. One reason there are so few women in magic is that magic is a display of power. And within this culture, that is something that traditionally has not been acceptable for women. And so for decades, most women have been powerless assistants on the magical stage, referred to in the trade as box jumpers or tray girls. 
Lance Burton's big show is almost over. One of his last illusions is packing up the portable props and the underclad female familiars. But his work as a magician doesn't end when the curtain falls. He feels a responsibility to his art that transcends performance. There's a lot of knowledge that isn't in books, it isn't in lectures, that's passed on from teacher to student to the next student by word of mouth. And basically that's how magic was learned for the last 5,000 years. Since the earliest times, magic tricks have evolved, especially the grand illusions. The technology has improved, but times and tastes have changed too. Lance Burton is doing a double levitation here, rising skyward lying under a beautiful young woman. If Robert Houdin had tried that, even with Madame Robert Houdin up top, his 19th century audiences would have rioted. But then they'd never been to Vegas. Jeff McBride. Levitation deals with the ancient desire of the human condition to transcend the material world and to evolve towards the spiritual world. That's the nature of life. But sometimes it's just fun to watch. Not all magical manifestations of human... Magic wakes us up in many ways. Paradoxically, it wakes us up to dreams, both good and bad dreams. That may be the key to its enduring popularity. Often without a word, magic speaks to our hopes and our fears. It encourages childlike wonder and adult skepticism. It can be as big as a Las Vegas showroom or as small as your Uncle Bob pulling a quarter out of your ear. And it can be beautiful. Magician Peter Samuelson. As magicians, I think one of the things that we strive to achieve is an element of artistry. And if you approach art, then you really need to ask the question of what is art for or what is it about? And, and I think that it needs to involve a leap of the imagination. It needs to come to a new way of seeing part of the world.